Learning a new language is a really rewarding but challenging experience, right? Like, not only are you learning new words and grammar, but then every place or even groups of people have their own slang that might not translate very clearly. Like, just think about how many phrases we have in English to talk about getting something done. Maybe you've heard people say stuff like, let's get down to business or get down to brass tacks. They don't really mean that you should launch a corporation or finish upholstering a chair with some brass pins. It's just a way to say, let's do this. Part of why we use a lot of metaphors when it comes to getting stuff done is that the point between thinking and planning something and actually doing the thing is a significant milestone. And so even though some of us English speakers like to focus on this momentous moment when action starts happening, writing can be a lot messier. Like the physical act of typing or putting pen on paper is writing. But writing also refers to the entire imaginative research and creation process of written communication. And depending on how you want to work, the lines between the thoughtful planning stages, the putting words on paper stages, and the finalizing stages can be kind of blurry. But thinking about how we turn our preliminary ideas into actual writing can still help us prepare for the real and sometimes messy work of getting going, getting off the ground, and getting rolling. Let's get the show on the road and learn more about drafting. Hi, I'm Dr. Emily Zarka, and welcome to Study Hall Rhetoric and Composition. So let's start with what drafting is not. Though it can feel like a pretty significant phase, drafting is not the entire writing process. It's just one step. And when writers think drafting equals writing, they discount all the other steps that help us create our best writing, starting with invention and planning and wrapping up with revising and editing. And recognizing that drafting is just part of writing can actually be kind of freeing. Like if we tell ourselves, I'm drafting my paper tonight, rather than I'm writing my paper tonight, we're reminded that every word doesn't have to be perfect and there's not so much pressure. Instead, think of drafting as the phase where your invention and planning get put into a text form. It's open to change, but it's also moving you toward the final product. It's based on your plan, but it's also something that can be refined later. So let's think through what drafting really looks like. For me, when I'm writing a script or an essay, I'm usually sitting at a computer, typing and retyping sentences, clicking over to my sources for inspiration, and rereading any other materials. That's a pretty complex experience. And in 2022, drafting can happen in all kinds of digital environments, like a word processor document, but also in a movie editing software or in a specialized program for creating screenplays or digital games or so many other things. Accessibility tools have made drafting in a way that works for your brain even more possible. Many students discover that after struggling with keyboard input writing, they're able to flourish by speaking their sentences into voice-to-text software. And with such a complicated experience, it's pretty likely that, realistically, we don't fully separate drafting from invention and planning, or from revising and editing. We'll talk more about it in a specific episode on drafting techniques, but part of invention could be drafting a complete draft but doing it quickly, without a lot of second-guessing. Other techniques that also yield drafted work can include jumping around in the text, writing things like the core part of the paper before writing the introduction, in order to work on what is most clear in your mind first. And we'll often do at least some editing as we go, as you'll note if you ever click the backspace key to correct a typo right after it occurs. We still benefit from a big picture reread when a draft is fairly complete, but you'll notice that lots of your individual moments of drafting are spontaneous hops and skips between all the stages, invention, planning, drafting, revising, and editing. Figuring out the exact strategies for drafting that work for you starts with understanding what drafting is, but it continues to develop over time. So when you're not getting what you want from drafting, try to look at the work you're doing and see if there's something you can change to experiment and have more success. Like if you're distracted by your pinging email, you can try disconnecting from the internet or switching to a physical notebook. Or if you find that you get stuck a lot, maybe experiment with a longer, more thorough planning process before you dive into the draft. And really, the biggest truth about drafts is that they are provisional or open to change. Drafting is an opportunity to learn that intersects with and draws on all the other phases of the writing process. And just because it might take us more than one version to get to the final product, that doesn't mean that time is wasted. 
Let's look at an example. Gemma has been asked to submit a short bio about herself for a conference, where she'll be speaking to her fellow flavor development chemists. Now, it's just a short bio, so her invention and planning strategies aren't super formal. In fact, she might not even realize that's what she's doing. But they do matter because they help her get a sense of the project and evaluate a lot of options for her bio. She thinks through what she wants someone to know about her at the conference, and how its purpose can be to communicate who she is, plus help her do some networking and establish her credibility so people will come to her talk. And rather than just starting writing and ending up with pretty much her entire autobiography, she sets up a plan for how she'll draft two. She'll reread four of the last year's bios, look over her own resume for potential accomplishments and language to use, and then type up a few sentences to start. Her drafting involves slipping back and forth from the physical program from last year's conference, her own resume, and an empty document where she's adding sentences. She ends up putting together a long paragraph that reflects her professional experience, where she's worked, and where she was educated. But when she sends it to the conference organizer, she finds out they're only doing three sentence bios this year to save space. This revision request ends up being basically a return to drafting, but that's part of how the writing process works. It's often a non-linear journey. Though Gemma's initial work wasn't in vain, she actually has all the needed information in her original draft, so she can make a second draft that fits her needs much faster than if she was starting from scratch. She still spends time reviewing the sentences, so she makes a great first impression, but her first and second drafts help her address her audience and the specific needs of the task. So even seemingly simple projects can go through multiple drafts as we learn more about the project and what we want to say and refine our initial ideas from the invention and planning phases. That doesn't mean you did the assignment wrong or that you're starting over completely because you know a lot more now than you did at the start. Drafts are always subject to change, even major change. The trick is figuring out how much change is actually necessary, which is a big part of becoming better and better at drafting. Think about it like if you lose your keys. You retrace your steps until you find the moment when you inexplicably stuck your keys in the freezer or wherever they ended up. Similarly, when you receive critical feedback on some writing, you'll retrace your steps. Do you just need a tweak here or there or more substantial revisions? Just as often, you'll need to go further back in the process. Maybe new invention or a new plan are what you need, which will lead to an entirely new draft. If after she'd found out it had to be a lot shorter, Gemma had just gone back and corrected a typo in her long bio and then resubmitted it, the conference organizer would be understandably annoyed. She needed to retrace farther back to draft a new short bio, not just tweak the one she had. At the same time, Gemma didn't fail to produce a good bio. She can reuse what she'd written somewhere else, even though it didn't suit this particular project. And we've got to stop thinking of our writing efforts as failures. Drafts can always have a next draft. She and we are doing the best we can. We may find dead ends on what we're promising drafting directions, and we may realize that what seemed aligned with our purpose just won't accomplish our goals. Try to see your success as a writer as based upon your willingness to work the steps and retrace as needed, writing new drafts and making changes to them until your writing accomplishes your goals. When we define a single draft as the act of writing, we're more likely to feel like that was our one shot, and now we've failed. Thankfully, that's not true, and framing this step as drafting rather than writing really helps us keep the potential for change and new drafts in mind. We hope that your process, but not your home, is very drafty. After all, it's invigorating to start seeing your plans take shape as texts. Let's get down to business and draft. Thanks for watching Study Hall Rhetoric and Composition, which is part of the Study Hall Project, a partnership between ASU and Crash Course. If you liked this video and want to keep learning with us, be sure to subscribe. You can learn more about Study Hall and the videos produced by Crash Course and ASU in the links in the description. See you next time.